Part of the chapter I wanted to focus on there was in verse 28 where the Bible read, For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart and the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. And the title of the sermon this evening is Lies of Judaism. Lies of Judaism. You say, what is Judaism? It's a religion. Judaism is a religion. And sometimes you have to be careful when you use certain words because people don't understand what you mean. Sometimes you'll say the word Jew and you're just referring to someone who believes in Judaism. Okay. Or someone may say someone's a Jew. They believe because of their ethnicity, they are Jewish based on who their parents are or based on their supposed DNA or ethnicity. Now, I personally don't believe in race. Okay, obviously there's different classifications of people. Some people are taller, some people are shorter, some people have dark hair, some people have light hair, people have certain colors of skin. Obviously there's variations within people and some people look more similar than others, but according to the Bible there's no such thing as race. Now there's certain nations that God has ordained, God, but he says they're all made of one blood. We all have the same blood, we're all man, we're all mankind. Now go, if you would, to 2 Kings chapter 16, because I want to make sure we understand what a Jew is according to the Bible. And very clearly, when we read Romans chapter number 2, he says a Jew, according to the Bible, in this context, has nothing to do with anything physical. He's saying, he, this, this, the one that's outward in a Jew, this is not a Jew, according to what Romans chapter 2 is saying. And I like it in Ephesians chapter 2, 8 and 9, because it says very clearly, when it's talking about there's a difference between the circumcision and the uncircumcision, he calls those that would many people call Jews today, the so-called Jews today, he calls them circumcision made by hands. The circumcision of the flesh made by hands. So I'm going to try and refer to them as that. The circumcision made by hands. Meaning what? They physically made themselves a Jew. And this is what Judaism is, is it's a physical circumcision. And you say, I want to be part of, of Israel today, you have to physically be circumcised to join the state of Israel today. Not only that, that was even Old Testament law. You, still, you had to get circumcised. But let's see, when does the word Jew even occur in the Bible? Because you actually, if you just start in Genesis, you're going to take a long time to find the word Jew in your Bible. Look at 2 Kings chapter 16, verse 5. Then Rezan, king of Syria, and Pekah, son of Remaliah, king of Israel, came up to Jerusalem to war, and they besieged Ahaz, but could not overcome him. At that time, Rezan, king of Syria, recovered Elath to Syria, and drave the Jews from Elath, and the Syrians came to Elath, and dwelt there unto this day. Now, the interesting thing is, is we have a war between who? Israel and the Jews. So there's, this, there's making a distinction between Israel and the Jews. I thought they were the same. Wrong. According to the Bible, we had two kingdoms at this time. You have the northern kingdom of Israel, and then you have those that are of the southern kingdom of Judea, and those that are of Judea, they're Jews. If you live in Texas, people will say, hey, you're a Texan. Hey, you live in America, people say, you're a American. People that lived in Judea, what were they called? Jews. And this mostly consisted of who? Those of the tribe of Judah, those of the tribe of Benjamin, and those of the tribe of Levi. Now, obviously, there were still sojourners in that area. There were still even other tribes that had decided they just wanted to live in the southern kingdom because they were more godly, because they actually were trying to follow God's word, because they had the true religion. But the first definition of Jew, according to the Bible, is those of Judea. It's a physical area that they live in. It's just talking about their nation, the nation that they're comprised of. Now, look at chapter number 17. Look at chapter number 17, verse 13. Yet the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah. So there's their two nations, okay? He's making a distinction. You got Israel and you got Judah. By all the prophets and by all the seers, saying, Turn ye from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes, according to all the law which I command your fathers, and which I sent to you by my servants and prophets. Notwithstanding, they would not hear. But hardened their necks, like to the neck of their fathers, that did not believe in the Lord their God, and they rejected his statutes and his covenant that he made with their fathers, and his testimonies which he testified against them. And they followed vanity and became vain, and went after the heathen that were round about them, concerning whom the Lord had charged them. 
that they should not do like them. And they left all the commandments of the Lord their God. How many commandments did they break? All of them. And made them molten images, even two calves, and made a grove, and worshipped all the host of heaven, and served Baal, and they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire. That's abortion. And used divination and enchantments, and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord, to provoke him to anger. So, I mean, do you think God likes this? Hey, you broke all my commandments. Every time I'm talking to you, giving you testimony, you're not following it. Every, every opportunity I'm giving you, you're breaking it. You're committing the worst sins imaginable. You're literally putting your children in fire and burning them alive. Not only that, let's keep reading. Look at verse number uh, 18. Therefore, the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. There was none left but the tribe of Judah only. So because they decided we're not going to follow any of your laws, we're going to break all of your laws, we're going to go ahead and serve other gods. We're going to do the opposite of everything you commanded us. Everything you told us not to do, we're going to do that. Basically, he's like, hey, here's all the list of things you should do. Here's all the things you shouldn't do. Well, we're going to do all the ones that we shouldn't do. That's what they were doing. And guess what he says? I'm going to get rid of you. I'm going to remove you out of my sight. So then what's left? Just Judah. And if you read your Bible, you have the two kingdoms for a while. Then all of a sudden, Israel's gone. So what do you have left? You just have Judah. You just have the southern kingdom. You just have those that were what? Of Judah, of Benjamin, and Levi. Those are the ones that are left. Look at verse number 19. Also, Judah kept not the commandments of the Lord their God, but walked in the statutes of Israel which they made. So is Judah better? No. <laughs> Judah did the same thing too. Even if you read in certain parts of the scripture, it said they did worse than their sister Israel. It says in verse 20, and the Lord rejected all the seed of Israel. Wow, that's pretty harsh. Now, as he said, he get rid of Judah, though. No. So we have the distinction. We have to make sure we understand what are we talking about? Israel and Judah. So did he say get rid of all 12 tribes. No, he's talking about those of the northern kingdom that call themselves Israel. And he says he afflicted them and delivered them in the hand of the spoilers and they had cast them out of his sight for he rent Israel from the house of David. And they made them Jeroboam, Jeroboam, the son of Nebat king, and Jeroboam drove Israel from following the Lord and made them sin a great sin. For the children of Israel walked in all the sins of Jeroboam, which he did. They departed not from them until the Lord removed Israel out of his sight, as he had said by all his servants the prophets. So was Israel carried away out of their own land to Assyria unto this day. And the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon and from Cuthath and from Ava and from Hamath and from Sepharvaim and placed them in cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. And they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. So what happens? Well, he's, he's kind of giving you a history lesson for a moment. He says, at one point we had David. And we had King Saul who ruled over all 12 tribes. Then we had David who ruled all over all 12 tribes. Then we had Solomon who is ruling over all 12 tribes. But Solomon, at the end of his life, he stops trusting in the Lord and he starts burning his children in sacrifice under the fire. He starts worshiping other gods. But God looks at Solomon and he says, I'm not going to punish you because of your father, David. He says, I'm not going to punish you in your lifetime because of your father, David, but your son, he's not going to rule over the 12 tribes. I'm going to rip out the 10 tribes from you, 10 of the 12, and I'm going to give them to Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. He gives him one for, you know, David's sake. And he gets, so he gets the tribe of Judah. And then he also gets Benjamin. Okay, so he gets two tribes to rule over. But as the time goes on, Jeroboam with the ten tribes, they just don't want to do anything with God. They don't want to serve God. So it gets to the point where God just says, well, you're rejected. So there's a point in time in the Old Testament. Listen to me now. In the Old Testament where ten tribes are done, they, they're gone. He's like, I've removed you out of my sight. I have nothing to do with you anymore. In the Old Testament. Not only that, let's keep reading. Verse 25. And so it was from the beginning of their dwelling there that they feared not the Lord. Therefore the Lord sent lions among them, which slew some of them. Wherefore they spake to the king of Assyria, saying, The nations which thou hast removed and placed in the cities of Samaria know not the manner of the God of the land. Therefore he has sent lions among them, and behold, they slay them, because they know not the manner of the God of the land. Then the king of Assyria commanded, saying, Carry thither one of the priests whom ye brought from thence. 
and let them go and dwell there, and let them teach them the manner of the God of the land. Then one of the priests whom they had carried away from Samaria came and dwelt in Bethel, and taught them how they should serve or should fear the Lord. Howbeit, every nation made gods of their own and put them in the house of the high places which the Samaritans had made, every nation in the cities wherein they dwelt. And the men of Babylon made Succubeth Benoth, and the men of Cuth made Nergal, and the men of Hamath made Ashima, and the Avites and the Nibhaz and Tartak and the Sepharvites burnt their children in fire to Adremelech and Anemelech, the gods of Sepharvaim. So they feared the Lord and made of themselves the lowest of them priests of the high places, which sacrificed for them in the house of the high places. They feared the Lord and served their own gods after the manner of the nations whom they carried away from thence. Unto this day they do after the former manners. They fear not the Lord, neither do they after their statutes, or after their ordinances, or after the law, and commandment which the Lord commanded the children of Jacob, whom he named Israel. So this is very important. I, I know I read a lot, but it's really important just understanding what's happened. Okay, At, at this time, he's taken away Israel. Israel's gone. So just other people are coming to inhabit the land. But what's happening? There's lions coming in. They're constantly cursed. So they're like, we got to figure out who's the God of this land so we don't stop getting so cursed. So they basically just try to find some prophet to come in and try to teach them Christianity, try to teach them how to serve the Lord. But they still have all their other gods. They're kind of like Hindus. They just like, oh, I like that God, too. Just add him to my repertoire. You know, just add him to my bracelet. I got all the God. I got the coexist bumper sticker on my you know, car where I just like all religions. I just serve everybody. But they don't really fear the Lord. They're not really the tribes of Israel. They're not, according to God's word, God's chosen people. They're, they have nothing to do with the God of the Bible. They're just fake religion. Okay? This is why you see in your New Testament, the Jews, they have no regard for the Samaritans. They look at the Samaritans like they're a joke, like they're heathen. They don't look at them like, oh, you're also the ten tribes too. No, they're just heathen, ungodly people. They have nothing to do with them. They want nothing to do with They won't even touch them. They think it's wrong to even eat with the Samaritan. They look at the Samaritans like they're dirt, like they're scum. That makes sense because why? They're just heathen, according to the Bible. They're not of the ten tribes anymore. They're just mixed and mingled. Obviously, there's still remnants of these ten tribes that exist everywhere, you know, that they've been scattered and taken captivity. But for the most part, you can't look at it and say, oh, this is the ten tribes. Oh, this is, you know, uh, Dan, and this is all, you know, the uh, Naphtali. It, it's just been mixed off. It's gone. And according to God, he doesn't look at them and say they're Israel anymore. They're just heathen. They don't serve the Lord. So go, if you would, to 1 Kings chapter number 11. 1 Kings chapter number 11. See, well, why did he do it to Israel but not Judah? Why would, you know, because I thought the promises of, of God to these people were forever. I thought no matter what they did, I mean, they're God's chosen people. No, according to the law, it was conditional on them keeping the law. It was conditional on them obeying God's commandments. And he said very clearly, when you didn't, he would remove you from the land. But he does have, a, he does have an eternal covenant that he made. He said, hey, I'm, I'm not going to snuff out some certain people. Look at 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 36. And unto his son will I give one tribe, that David my servant may have a light always before me in Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen me to put my name there. So who's talking? Well, he's talking about how Solomon's son would, would still get a tribe, okay, because of David. Why? That he would always have a light. So the promise of God was that there would be a Messiah, that a Messiah would come of the tribe of David. So God's like, I'm going to let David exist until the Messiah comes. Not for the sake of them, not because they were following the laws, not because they're following the commandments, not for their righteousness, but for the righteousness of the Lord. For the fact that he promised the coming Messiah, the seed of Abraham, that would come the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's why they were able to maintain themselves all the way up until when? Till Jesus Christ comes. So that's why they exist, not because they were more righteous than the Israelites. Not because they didn't do the same wicked things. It's because God was saying, I'm going to preserve that seed. But it had nothing to do with them keeping the law. They didn't keep the law either. They were breaking the law too. Go to 2 Kings chapter number 8. We'll keep understanding this. My first point of the lie of Judaism is the fact that they say they're Jews. They're not Jews. Those of Judaism are not Jews according to the Bible. Romans chapter 2 makes it clear, look, it's not outward. The Jews are not the ones that are outward. 
And we're learning right now what an outward Jew would even look like. What those of the circumcision made by hands look like. Look at 2 Kings chapter 8, verse 19. Yet the Lord would not destroy Judah because they were so righteous, because they kept all the commandments. No, for David, his servant's sake, as he promised him to give him always a light unto his children. So he made a promise to David, hey, you're going to always have a light. Your children are always going to sit on the throne of Judah. Why? Because he wanted the Lord Jesus Christ to come through that seed. Go, if you would, to John chapter number four now. Go, in your new, go to your New Testament, John chapter number four. I'll read you another verse. It says in 2 Chronicles 21, 7, Howbeit the Lord would not destroy the house of David because of the covenant that he had made with David, and as he had promised to give a light to him and to his sons forever. So the only reason that Judah was preserved was because the Lord Jesus Christ was going to come with that line. Because the Lord Jesus Christ is going to be a son of David. That's the only reason. Otherwise, they would have been out too. They would have been kicked out. They're just as whorish as their sister Israel is. You read Ezekiel if you, if you don't believe that. Look at John chapter 4, verse 19. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain. And ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh. When ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Here's another one you should just store away in your mind. Jesus Christ said he was the Christ. He said he was the Messiah. Amen. Hey, when Messiah comes, guess what? I'm him. How much clearer can you get? It? Obviously, he even gets more clear. We'll, we'll look at other examples. But what was the point? He said salvation is of the Jews. Okay, but is a Jew one that's outwardly? No. It's one that's been circumcised of the heart. Who, and not in the letter, but in the spirit, whose praise is not of men, but of God. So who's going to get saved? The true Jews, the ones that have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now go to Revelation chapter 2. Or go to Re I'm sorry, go to John 8. Go to John 8. We'll, we'll understand what I'm about, how I'll tie this together in just a moment, okay? So we've understood, what is a Jew that's outward in the flesh? It's those of the tribe of Judah. We're not talking about all of Israel, we're not talking about the 12 tribes of Israel. We're talking about those that have remained from Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. They were of the southern kingdom. They've continued to exist all the way to the days of Christ. And in the day of Christ, you have the Samaritans. He's talking to a Samaritan woman. He's like, you don't even know what you worship. Because they're worshiping everything, right? They're worshiping all the gods. They're just, worship, just worshiping to worship. They're going to Hillsong. They're just, I surrender. I surrender. They don't even know what they're surrendering to. Look at John chapter 8, verse 37. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which you have seen with your father. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto him, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. So the Lord Jesus Christ, he's talking to those that have remained. Those that have remained in the southern kingdom, he's looking at physical, outward, made in the flesh, made by hands, Jews. And he says, I know you're Abraham's seed. You are the physical descendants of Abraham. They've kept that line. The, southern, the, the Jews are the only ones that have kept it. I mean, everybody else has been mingled to just ridiculousness at this point. But he's saying, look, I know you're the seed, but guess what? You're not the children. Why? Because the Bible says you're children of God by faith, and you're also the children of Abraham by faith is what the Bible says. So when the Lord Jesus Christ looks at an outward Jew, looks at one that's had the circumcision made by hands, he says, you're not a child of Abraham. Guess who they are? They're the ones that have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. They are the children of Abraham. You say, what's the first lie of Judaism? They say that they're a Jew. They're not a Jew. They're not Jews, according to the Bible. They are the circumcision made by hands, but they're not the Jews in the New Testament. They're not the Jews of the Bible. They're not what God looks at with Jew. And if you take the word Jew to just mean the exact same thing every single time in your Bible, you'll get confused quick. You have to let the context tell you what he's talking about. Obviously, in the Old Testament, when he uses the word Jew, who's he talking about? Those of the southern kingdom. 
those of the three tribes that I mentioned. When he's talking to the New Testament, when he talks about the Jews, who is he talking about? He's talking about those that are believers, those that are the children of Abraham by sp the, in the Spirit. We'll prove this even more, but go to Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. We'll have more proof that they're lying when they call themselves Jews. You say, well, you just have one verse. Let's see what Jesus says in Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. So those that are made with flat, made, they're the circumcision made by hands, they say we're Jews. But guess what? They do, they're not. They're liars. They're the synagogue of Satan. Look at chapter 3, verse 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. So he's saying, look, those that think they're Jews, those that are of the ones made by hands, they're going to come and worship before the true Jews, those that are the Christians, those that have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now go to Genesis chapter number 12 and Galatians 3. We're going to look at two different parts. And this is going to help us understand both of my next points. So my first point was what? The lie of Judaism, they say they're Jews, but according to the Bible, they're liars. They are not. The Jews, according to the New Testament, are those that have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. In that context of the New Testament, who's he talking about? He's talking about believers. Those are the ones that are the real Jews. Not only that, though, they say that the physical nation of Israel today is their God-given right. But guess what? I mean, the, 12, the 10 of those tribes, God already moved them in the Old Testament. Before the Lord Jesus Christ. Before any of the crucifixion. Before any of those things, they were gone. They were done. And the only reason that the Jews, the Judeas, the, the Judaizers, those that are the circumcision made by hands are still there is because of the promise given to David that the Lord Jesus Christ would come in the future. That's the only reason they survived. Not because they had this special covenant. They have this special Abrahamic covenant that is given to them forever, no matter what. And they'll go to Genesis chapter 12 and they'll make fun of Christians. They'll say, well, well they'll make fun of people that are considered anti-Zionist. They'll say, yeah, but you've got to bless them that bless thee. And you've got to curse him that curseth thee. And if you want blessing, you've got to bless the physical Jew today. You've got to bless those of modern day Israel. You've got to bless those of the circumcision made by hands. That is not what the Bible teaches anywhere. That is not what Genesis chapter number 12 says. It actually says the exact opposite. It says the opposite of what they're trying to say. Look at verse number one. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So according to Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 through 3, who's getting the blessing? Abraham primarily. It's the same to thee, I'm giving you this blessing, and those that bless Abraham are going to be blessed, and those that curse Abraham are going to be cursed. But not only that, he says, and in thee, so somewhere in Abraham, all families of the earth will be blessed. So the, the ridiculousness is, they'll say, well, this is saying that Jews get a special covenant. I thought my Bible said all families. You say, well, maybe it's just all of his families. Maybe it's just all the Jewish families. Well, that's why we go to Galatians chapter 3. Let's, let's let the Bible tell us what all families really means. Is it you know, all families or is it just all Abraham's families? Well, look at Galatians chapter 3 verse 8. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, And these shall all nations be blessed. So according to the Bible, when he was writing Genesis 1 through 3, it was specifically for the heathen. He was saying, not only am I going to bless you and your physical descendants, you're going to be a blessing to all families, to all nations, to everybody, for the heathen. But they use this to say, well, no, if you're not a physical Jew, you don't have any right to that land. That's racism. Zionists are racist today. They're the most racist people on the planet. And if you say you're against the modern state of Israel, if you say I'm against Zionism, if you say I'm not a Zionist, they'll, they'll say, oh, you're racist. You're anti-Semitic. You just hate the Jews. 
I don't hate any physical Jew. I don't hate him. I hate the, the religion of Judaism. I hate those that hate the Lord Jesus Christ. I hate those that blaspheme his name. But you know what? I, I want them to be saved. I want them to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the ones that aren't reprobate already. But I'm not hating a certain group of people just because of who their physical descendants are. That's what the Jews do. The Jews say, you know what? We hate the Palestinians because of who their mom and dad are. They don't have right to this land. We do. So we're going to just bomb them. We're just going to kill them. We're going to murder them. We're going to constantly bomb them because Fox News said it's okay. Because the president said it's okay. Because whoever, you know, Zionist said it was okay. And they'll say this, the Bible says it's okay. I mean, the Bible promised them the land. That is not what the Bible says. That is a lie from the pit of hell to kill and to warfare. Look, the only reason that the Jews even existed up to the point of the Lord Jesus Christ was so they could get Christ. So they could bring us the Lord Jesus Christ. Then he was caught up into heaven for a short space. So there is no more kingdom of Jerusalem. But when he returns, then we'll get his physical reign for a thousand years. Go back to the you know, sermons I preached a few a week ago, okay? But let's go back to Genesis chapter 12. Go forward to chapter 13. And we'll see, not only will they say, well, it was just given to the Jews. They'll say it was given to them forever. And they'll say, we know that it was given to them forever. Look at verse number 14. And the Lord said to Abraham, after that lot was separated from him, lift up now thine eyes. And look from the place where thou art northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it and to thy seed forever. You say, oh, we, they got us. <laughs> he said he's going to give it to the seed forever. And you know, if you get a modern Bible today, if you have a New King James, if you have the ESV or all these other fake Bibles, they'll say descendants here. They won't say seed. They'll say descendants. That is going to be immediately disproved when you go back to Galatians 3. Go back to Galatians 3. Let's let the Bible interpret itself. Amen. You say, I need a commentary today. Well, guess what? Just get a New Testament. You want a commentary for your Old Testament? You want to understand the Old Testament? It's the New Testament. It's the Apostle Paul. That's my favorite commentator. I get Apostle Paul telling me what the Old Testament means. You know, by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost telling me what he meant in the Old Testament. Hey, what did you mean by all families? Oh, it was all nations. Hey, let's see what it means by thy seed. Look at Galatians chapter 3, verse 16. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. And he saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one. And to thy seed, which is the physical, uh, wait, what does it say? Which is Christ. Amen. Does it say a physical nation of Jews? No. Is your Bible racist today? No, God is not a respecter of persons in the Old Testament, nor in the New Testament. Those that weren't even of the 12 tribes of Israel, I'm not going to take the time to prove it. But if they came to the nation of Israel and they were physically circumcised and they kept the Passover, they were part of the children of Israel. They were part of that nation. And whatever tribe that they sojourned in, meaning wherever they decided to live, Texas or Arizona or Oklahoma, they were of that tribe of the Levites or the Danites. They become a part of that nation. And look, in the New Testament, it's the same way. Anybody that believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, they become one of his children, and they can go to whatever church they want. That's how they worship the Lord now. They don't have to go to a physical nation. There's no longer a physical nation. Now there's the New Testament church, where we come together, and that's where we praise the Lord. There's been a change of the law. Look, and now we have the better testament. Now we have the New Testament, where we come to church to worship the Lord. In the Old Testament, you would have to go to the physical land of Israel to make your sacrifices and offerings through the high priest. That is how you worship the Lord in the Old Testament. Gladly in the New Testament, I don't have to do that. I, you know, and those people that lived really far away, a lot of times they'd have to sell all their you know, cattle and get turned into money. Then they'd come to Jerusalem, which cost a lot of money. Then they'd have to buy at the temple you know, sacrifices to be offered. And that's where the Jews would take advantage of people. They would charge them extra money. They'd have unfair balances. You see all kinds of wickedness. That's why Jesus Christ flipped over the tables in the temple because people were traveling from a long way to serve the Lord. That's how they served the Lord. So my second point is the land is theirs is a lie of Judaism. Amen. The lie of Judaism is they say that physical land today is ours. No, you know what it is? It's Christ's. It's Christ's land and you only get it if you're a believer. 
Let's go to the end of Galatians chapter 3. Give me a second to turn there. Look at verse number 26. For you are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. You know what? You can be that seed today if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. But look back at what it said in verse number 28. There is neither Jew. There is neither Jew. There is neither Jew. You say, oh, there's Jews today. My Bible says there isn't Jew. <laughs> and you know what kind of Jew he's talking about? The one made by hands. He's saying, look, there is no distinction anymore. You're all one in Christ Jesus. You either believe on the Lord Jesus Christ or you don't. That's the distinction in the New Testament. Now go, if you would, to Matthew 24. Matthew 24. Look, the promise, what was given to Abraham was a promise. And every promise of the Bible is received by faith. Those in the modern state of Israel today, they have no faith in the Lord. They have no faith in God's commandments. They don't believe any of this book. They can't receive it because it's a promise. And a promise is by faith. It's by hope. It's not what's seen carnally. And that's what the, the fake state of Israel is today. It's all carnal. Everything is carnalized. It's about a physical land. It's about a physical circumcision. It's everything is carnal in their eyes. And the New Testament, it's all spiritual. And if you read your New Testament, this is the constant struggle for the Jews. They try to carnalize everything. Jesus Christ is preaching to Nicodemus how a man is going to be born again. And he's like, I have to get inside my mom again? I have to be born again of my mom physically? How is that even possible? And he's like, you don't get it. It's, it's of the spirit, buddy. It's not a carnal. They say, you have to eat my you know, flesh and drink my blood. They're like, do I get a fork and a knife? I mean, what's going on? They're like, how do we eat this man? They don't get it. Everything Jesus is saying is spiritual. And they're dead today, so they can only think in carnal terms. They don't get it. So they have their temple mount. They have their physical temple today. You've probably seen the Jews, are, they're going to this wall, and they're doing this. He's like, what is that? Well, it's called the Western Wall, or the Wailing Wall, and another lie of Judaism as that this is part of the temple. But the Bible destroys that. Because look, everything that they say is lies. They're filled with lies. They're liars. Everything they teach is lies. I'll read for you from Wikipedia. It says, The rabbinic tradition teaches that the Western Wall was built upon foundations lied by the biblical king Solomon from the time of the first temple. A midrash compiled in late antiquity refers to a Western Wall of the temple which would never be destroyed. So let me tell you what they just said. They said they believe that the Western Wall, Judaism teaches that the Western Wall today is part of King Solomon's temple. A part of King Solomon. Now, this is really crazy because King Solomon's temple was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar. We're not even talking about the second one erected by Zerubbabel. They're saying that they believe that this temple was, you know, wasn't even destroyed with Nebuchadnezzar, which I'm not even going to prove that one. But we know even later, the one erected by Zerubbabel was also destroyed. Look at Matthew 24, verse 1. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto him, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. So what did Jesus Christ say? He said there wouldn't even be a single stone upon another. So you have two options. Either Jesus Christ is a liar, or the Western Wall is a fraud. Guess which one I'm going to pick. <laughs> and I mean, I, I'm not even going to show you how it was destroyed the same way with Nebuchadnezzar. With, and to believe that that's still the same temple, that's the same wall, that's ridiculous. But they say this, it came from a midrash. It came from the Torah. It came from their oral law, from the Talmud, and from all of their books, from their rabbinic teachings. Look, everything they teach is lies. Go, if you would, to John chapter number 7. John chapter number 7. Not only that, the, the teachers of Judaism today, they think they are masters of Israel. They think they are the greatest teachers on the earth. If you want to know the God of the Bible, you have to go to a rabbi. You have to go to one of these rabbinic teachers. You have to sit at their feet and beg them to teach you the word of God. That's what they believe. And you know what? Christians fall for this junk. 
for this trash. They'll go to rabbis and they'll be like, we can't understand all the culture and we can't understand all of the things that have been passed down and we don't understand all the traditions and we can't understand all the Jewishness. Look, that's ridiculous. Jews weren't even in the Bible until the second Kings, first of all. I mean, Abraham wasn't a Jew. Hey, guess what? He wasn't a Jew. His son Isaac wasn't a Jew. Guess what? Jacob, his son, wasn't a Jew. Look, until you get to Judah, maybe you could call him a Jew. Okay, I don't know. But we don't have Jews mentioned in the Bible until 2 Kings. It's not, you know, people go this crazy with this Jewish crap. And they'll have rabbis come in Baptist churches and teach. They'll have Christians will bring in rabbis to teach them the Bible. Look, the Bible says they're not teachers at all. They're not the masters of Israel that you think. Even when Jesus was, you know, confronting Nicodemus, he says, art thou a master of the law and knowest not this? He's like, like, look, you know, it's not these things. He's asking about salvation. Just basic. I mean, salvation's simple. Salvation is just the beginning of the Bible. And he's saying, Nicodemus, you don't even understand salvation. You don't understand spiritual salvation. You're a master of the law and knowest not these things. He's saying he's, re he's rebuking him, saying, you don't know anything, buddy. How do you call yourself a master? Look at John chapter 7, verse 40. Many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying, said, Of a truth, this is the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. But some said, Shall Christ come out of Galilee? Hath not the scripture said that Christ cometh of the seed of David and out of the town of Bethlehem where David was? So there was a division among the people because of him, and some of them would have taken him, but no man laid hands on him. Then came the officers of the chief priests and Pharisees, and they said to them, Why have you not brought him? The, answers, the officers answered, Never man spake like this man. Then answered them the Pharisees, Are ye also deceived? Have any of the rulers or the, of the Pharisees believed on him? But this people who knoweth not the law are cursed. So what are they saying? They're saying, How did you not get this guy? We told you to go arrest him. And they're like, The words he was preaching were so powerful, there was no way we can arrest that guy. Never a man spake like this man. I mean, never, never did anybody preach with the power and eloquence of the Lord Jesus Christ. The word made flesh. When it came out, it was powerful. So powerful that the cops wouldn't even arrest him. Think about somebody speaking, you know, with great words that cops wouldn't even arrest you today. I mean, they're, they're so hardened. They're so, you know, they're willing to just arrest somebody just for fun these days. But he says, look, have the rulers of the Pharisees believed on him? He's saying, look, we're so much smarter than you. You don't know the law. We know the law. Y'all are cursed. Go to Matthew 23. Let's see what Jesus thought about that. Did Jesus think these guys, you know, really knew the law? Did Jesus think that these guys are the teachers of the law? In Matthew 15, the Bible says, Then came his disciples and said to him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard the saying? But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Jesus Christ, when he looked at these so-called masters, he said they're blind. They don't know anything. They don't understand any of it. They know nothing. So why are Christians today falling at the feet of those that are circumcised, made by hands, and saying, please teach me? You'll be taught how to go straight into the ditch. You're going to be taught by a blind man. Imagine me deciding I need to learn how to drive and I get some blind guy to teach me how to drive. That sounds really dangerous. You know, you go to uh, the bank today and some ATMs, they have Braille on them. They have Braille on the letters of the drive through ATM. Think about that for a second. <laughs> who's going to take me to the, who's going to use the Braille in the drive through ATM? Look, these are blind leaders of the blind. I'm not going to let a blind leader lead me. That's stupid. That's foolish. They're liars. They don't know any of the Bible. None of it. Zero. Well, let's get the Jewish context. Let's get, you know, the rabbinic teaching. You should just know, let's get their teaching to know what's wrong. Let's get their teaching to know what's obviously false. Because they don't know anything. What does Jesus say in Matthew 23? Look at verse 6. And love the uppermost rooms at feasts. He's talking about the Pharisees. And the seat, chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets. And to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But be ye not called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ. And all ye are brethren, and call no man your father upon the earth. For one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. So he's saying, look, these guys, they, they're just wrong in every way. I mean, they just start out wrong because they call themselves rabbi, because they call themselves masters of Israel. Look, there's only one master, that's Christ. Skip down to verse 16. 
Woe unto you, blind guides, which say, Whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. Ye fools and blind, whether is greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifieth the gold. So he's saying, look, when you teach, it's the exact opposite. When you say, you know, it's more important, you know, to worship at the, 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 the sanctuary, right? He said, whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. He's saying, look, they're looking at the gold, right? But Jesus rebukes them. He says, look, what's greater, the gold or the temple that's actually sanctifying the gold? So they're, they're looking at the money. They're looking at the gold. and They're like, wow, this is great. And Jesus is saying, look, it's the temple that even sanctifies that gold. So it's the exact opposite of what they were teaching. Look at verse 24. Ye blind guides, which strain of the gnat and swallow a camel. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. So again, every time they teach, Jesus Christ, it's the opposite, buddy. Nope, it's the spiritual application. Nope, you're wrong. Wrong again. You're blind. You're blind. You're blind. You're blind. Leaders of the blind, you're leading them into a ditch. Amen. Every time Jesus confronts these guys, they're always blind. Why is it that Christians today, oh, we've got to worship Israel, and we've got to let Israel teach us the Bible, and we can't know the Old Testament without Israel? Is that how Jesus felt? He's like, everything you say is the exact opposite, buddy. I mean, you're just so blind. You don't get any of it. A blind Pharisee. Go to John chapter number 10. So what have we learned so far? Some lies of Judaism. They say that they're the Jews, according to the Bible, they're liars. They're the synagogue of Satan. Not only that, they say that the physical land of Israel today is theirs. They're liars. It's Christ's. Amen. It's not their physical land. Not only that, they say that the physical land is theirs. Also, they take the Western Wall to a weird extreme. They say this, this wall has just always existed. Not only that, they say that they're teachers. They say that they're the greatest masters. Here's another lie they have. They deny the Lord Jesus Christ. Judaism denies the Messiah. They deny the Christ. Look at John chapter 10, verse 24. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. So they're saying, look, if you think you're Christ, just tell us. I mean, we'll believe you if you tell us, right? Jesus answered them, I told you, and you believe me not. He's like, look, I already told you, and you didn't believe me. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you believe not, because you are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of those works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. They rejected the fact that Jesus Christ said he was the Son of God, rejected the fact that he was saying, Me and my Father are one. I and my Father are one. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said to your gods. If he called them gods, unto whom the word of, the Lord, word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified and sent in the world, thou blasphemest, because I said, I am the Son of God. The Muslims will say, where did Jesus say I'm the Son of God? Well, he's saying, look, you calling me a blasphemer because I said I'm the Son of God? Now look, either two options are, are true here. Either Jesus Christ really said he was the Son of God, or he's lying here. <laughs> Again, why would he be confronting these guys? Hey, I said that I was the Son of God. I already told you that I'm the Christ. You didn't believe me. Look at verse 37. If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though ye believe, me not, believe not me, believe the works, that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Look, Nicodemus came in secret because he's like, man, I can't deny the works you're doing, buddy. I mean, we know that you're a teacher of God. It's just too obvious. So he's trying to figure out how to get saved. He's trying to figure out what do I got to do to get to heaven. But he's, Jesus Christ is saying, look, my works are so great, you could just believe me because of them. You wouldn't even have to believe my word. You could just see the fact of the miracles that I'm proving or doing. They prove that I'm the Son of God. They prove that I am really God. But they denied him. They denied him and they killed him. Go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Not only does Judaism reject the Lord Jesus Christ, blaspheme the Lord Jesus Christ, they'll say they didn't even kill him. 
They'll say they're not, they're not the guilty party. Well, we didn't really, we're not the ones, the Romans killed them. The Romans are the ones that put Jesus to death. This would be like David saying that the Ammonites are the ones that killed, you know, Uriah. But the Lord said that uh, David is the one that killed Uriah by the hand of the Ammonites. This is like when you hire a hitman. Well, I didn't kill him. You know, I didn't do it. You know, they did it. I, I didn't shoot the guy. The gun did. <laughs> I didn't stab the guy. The knife did. I mean, that's so ridiculous. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 14. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered the like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us and they please not God and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved to fill up their sins always, for the wrath has come upon them to the uttermost. Look, I don't think this guy is blessing the Jews. I don't think he's blessing those that are the circumcision made with hands, made by hands. He's saying, look, these are the worst people. They're contrary to all men. They're even forbidding us to preach the gospel and get people saved. They're enemies of the gospel, is what the Bible says. And those of Judaism, they're just trying to stop you from preaching the gospel, stop you from getting people saved, because the gospel is so clear. The gospel is preaching the Lord Jesus Christ, and they hate that name. They hated the Lord Jesus Christ. They killed the Lord Jesus Christ. They spit, and they just say his name accidentally, or they say something. They hate it. They curse it. Go to Mark chapter number 14. You say, yeah, but did Jesus Christ really give them a fair chance? I mean, did Jesus Christ really tell them that he was the Christ? I mean, when they were confronting him, did he really say it? You'll have John Hagee say that Jesus Christ never claimed to be the Messiah. He denied it. It's like, what in the world? Go to Mark chapter 14. What Bible is he reading? He must be reading the Talmud. He must be reading, you know, some blasphemous book. He's not reading the King James Bible, that's for sure. Mark 14, verse 60. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, Answerest thou nothing? What is it which these witness against thee? But he held his peace and answered nothing. Again, the high priest answered him and said unto him, Art thou the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. Amen. And ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Get that one wrapped in your mind. Mark 14, verse 62. Jesus said, I am. Amen. They say, hey, are you the Christ? Are you the son of the blessed? He's saying, are you the son of God? Are you son of God? Jesus says, I am. Amen. He didn't deny it. He said, I am. He's the truth. He's not afraid of the truth. He says, I already told you and you didn't believe me. You're, you're calling me a blasphemer because I said I'm the son of God? Then they confront him. Tell us again. Are you the Christ? He's like, yes. I'm like, we don't believe you. Are you the Christ? Yes. I don't, don't believe you. Hey, are you the Christ? I mean, how many times does he have to tell him? Eventually, he's done. Eventually, you know, he just doesn't talk anymore. He's just done. I mean, don't you get tired of just telling people the same answer over and over and over? Yeah, I am the Christ. Yes, I am the son of the blessed. He that believeth on me hath everlasting life is what he kept saying. He's not going around hiding who he is. He's not like, hey, I don't know if I'm really the Christ. Now, he obviously spake to them in parables, but many times he even clearly said to the Pharisees, I am Christ, and they denied him. Go to Matthew 27 and Exodus 24. Matthew 27 and Exodus 24. This is pretty interesting. In Matthew 27, verse 21, the Bible says, The governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate saith unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why? What evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could prevail, prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. Guess what? That didn't really work, by the way. Look at verse 25. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. They hated the Lord Jesus Christ, and his blood was on them. And you know what he said at the Last Supper? He said, this is my blood, which is the New Testament. Now look at Exodus chapter 24. Look at verse number 6. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar, and he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people, and they said, All that the Lord has said will we do, and be obedient. And Moses took the blood 
and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant which the Lord hath made with you concerning all these words. How did the first testament start? How did the first covenant start? With them sprinkling the blood on the people. How does the new covenant start? How does the new testament start? With them saying, let his blood be on us and on our children. But you know what the law is? It's a curse. The Bible says, curse is he which continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. And you know what, why they're going to go to hell? Because they're cursed today. Because they've broken the law. Look, we're all sinners. For all of sin and come short of the glory of God. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. And they're not going to go to hell necessarily because they killed the Lord Jesus, but because they didn't believe in Him. And in the Old Testament, they didn't go to hell because they didn't keep the law. They didn't have faith in the Lord. Because nobody kept the law. Nobody was perfect. The law was given to make sin exceeding sinful. And we have the old covenant started with the sprinkling of blood. Then we have this, the New Testament started with the spiritual sprinkling of blood. But they literally also shed his blood on that cross. Go to Acts chapter number 15. So what's their fifth lie? Their fifth lie is they denied the Messiah. They denied the Lord Jesus Christ. They killed the Lord Jesus Christ. They say he was a blasphemer. They denied the Holy One. Not only that, Acts chapter 15, they say that you have to be circumcised to be saved. Which, guess what? This is true in a spiritual sense, but it's not true in a physical sense, and they meant it physical. Look at Acts 15, verse 1. And a certain men, which came down from Judea, taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. It's all about the physical to them. Today. And if you want to be a part of the modern state of Israel today, you have to be circumcised. That's part of the requirements. And in the New Testament, when people are believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, when they're bringing in the Gentiles, when they're bringing in the uncircumcised, they say, guess what? If you don't get circumcised, you're not going to be saved because they're thinking carnally. They're thinking that the circumcision in the flesh has anything to do with the New Testament. Wrong. You have to be circumcised in the heart, which is believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the true Jew. It's not the one that's got a circumcision that's outward in the flesh. Go to Galatians chapter 5. We'll see that circumcision in the flesh has nothing to do with the New Testament. But my question is, why are there so many people in America today that are circumcised? Because of the influence of Zionism. Because of the influence of these Judaism lies which just propagate lie after lie after lie. If you look at the birth rates in America today, it says that 77% of all males born in 2010 were circumcised. In 1960, 83% of all the males were circumcised. And the ages between 14 and 59 today, 81% of American men are circumcised. Here's my question, why? Why are they physically circumcised? circumcised because of the influence of these Jews and their lies the ones that are made by hands that are trying to get you to do things that are carnal not spiritual not what the Bible says look at Galatians 5 verse 5 for we through the spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith for in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision but faith which worketh by love so according to the Bible in the New Testament circumcision doesn't profit you. Uncircumcision doesn't profit you. So when, why do you get circumcised? Look, I don't believe you should get circumcised in the New Testament. It's, it's just an outward sign of what the Jews did, the physical Jews. I don't see, there's no benefit. And you know what? In the medical community today, they struggle to come up with a, a, a benefit. They have to just make all kinds of stuff up to try and say, well, there's some kind of benefit. They'll say, you're less likely to get an STD. <laughs> what in the world? You know you're less likely to get an STD? Avoid, avoid fornication. Amen. Flee fornication. Right, yeah. Let every man have his own wife. You know what? Two virgins that get married, circumcised or uncircumcised, they're not going to get an STD. Amen. It's not going to happen. That's how you avoid STDs. Yeah. Saying that having circumcision you know, has anything to do with STDs is stupid. That's because they don't have anything. They don't have anything to say. And it's, why, where is it coming from? It's coming from these lies of Judaism. And it's important for us to understand what the Bible is teaching. Go, if you would, to Exodus 24. Exodus chapter 24. Well, this is my last point. 
So we've looked at a lot of lies. If we really wanted to cover every lie, we'd probably be here for, you know, until next Sunday. I mean, it's just lie after lie after lie. Look at Exodus chapter 24, verse 9. They went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu and 70 of the, other, of the elders of Israel. And they saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet as it was, were a paved work of sapphire stone, and as it were the body of heaven and his clearness. So now, the Bible does not talk about this. But according to the Jewish tradition, according to the rabbis, whenever they were on this you know, mount and Moses goes up, they teach that these 70 others, you know, they got this special oral law from God. And then it was passed on to the next rabbi, to the next rabbi. And they have all these writings which are considered the Talmud, which is their Jewish laws. Now, they were not written down until several hundred years after Christ. They were supposedly just orally passed down and preserved through the oral law. Even though there's like 20-something volumes, it's so much that a person could hardly even read all of it. I'm supposed to believe that it was perfectly preserved orally by all these Jewish liars. Okay, but that's where you get your Talmud. That's where you get all their rabbinic teachings. That's where they get their influences that are against the Bible. That's where you get the what? The menorahs today. That's where you get your dreidels today. That's where you get your, your star of Remphan today. You get all of this junk that's not in the Bible. I remember being confused. People would, you know, have these menorahs as a young boy, and I'd say, why do they do that? It's not in the Bible. Look, that's my question. And you know, Christians today, they'll buy Jewish merchandise. They'll buy the menorah. They'll buy the flag. They'll buy, I mean, when we left this parking lot this morning, the guy behind us had a Jewish flag on his dashboard. I was like, what in the world? How is that, you know, how's that not distracting while you're driving? Christians today, they love to fall all over themselves to buy all these things that have nothing to do with God's word. And so far, have we seen anything that would point, to, hey, we need to, you know, learn from these guys. We need to support these guys. We need to support the physical nation of Israel because they're the real Jews. They, they're not Jews. They say they're Jews, but they're liars. They're the synagogue of Satan. Go to Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1. Now, in Exodus chapter 24, 9 and 10, you probably can't even remember what I read, but did you get the Talmud from that? Did you get that oral law? Did you get those special 70 elders? Look, the guys on that list, Nadab and Abihu, they died. <laughs> they were wicked, and according to the Bible. They, I don't even know how they would have passed all that oral law down when they offered strange fire before the Lord and were consumed. Then Eliezer has to come and take over for Aaron. Look at Titus chapter 1, verse 11. This is talking about those that are the circumcision made by hands, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. You say, why do the Jews teach the things that they do for money? They will go into a Christian's church and teach lies. They hate all the people in that room, by the way. They think they're all goyim. They all think they're all dogs. They think that they're the wicked filth. They think they're the heathen. But they'll come in the church and teach lies, pretend to like them. Why? So you give them money. That's all that it's about. They want to use Goyim to get money to build their temple, to build their fake state nation of Israel. They just lie. And we need to stop their mouths. If every Christian would read Galatians chapter number three, they'd figure out, hey, it's not about a physical seed. It's a spiritual seed, which is Christ. Amen. It's not a seeds. It's one. It's seed. It's Christ. If they just open their Bible, just let it fall open. I mean, good night. How many things have we already looked at? These Jews are just liars. If you read any of the New Testament, Jesus Christ has no respect for these guys. And we need their mouths to be stopped. Why? Because they're, they're subverting whole houses. They're teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. Look at verse 12. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, The Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. Look, they're racist. They're racist in Paul's day. They're racist in this day. They say, look, all the Cretans, they're all liars. They're all wicked people. They're all just the worst filth. You can't trust them. Look at verse 13. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Well, I think we should study the Talmud. Your Bible says to avoid it. Amen. Your Bible says to not give heed to Jewish fables. We, not, we should not give heed to anything that a rabbi has to say. I just know that's a lie. Hey, you're a rabbi, lie. 
Everything that comes out of your mouth, lie. You say, why? You call them liars. You just keep calling them liars. We'll go to 1 John chapter 2 is the last place we'll turn. Let me give you a little sample. This is just for fun to close on. They have their book called the Maccabees. You know, they have all these extra writings that they have. The Maccabees. It's supposed to be the timeline in between, you know, your Old and New Testament. They say that, uh, I'll just read for you a little sample. It says, let's come to terms with the Gentiles, for our refusal to associate with them has brought us nothing but trouble. This proposal appealed to many people. Let me give you a little context. They're, they're under, you know, Gentile rule. Basically, all these Jews, they've come under Gentile rule, and they're, they're not being blessed. And they say, well, why don't we just, you know, go ahead and associate with them? Because before, they would just say, we need to reject the heathen. Have nothing to do with them, not be nice with them, not work with them, not do anything. And so, in the Maccabees book, they're saying, well, maybe we should just come to terms with the Gentiles, for our refusal to associate with them has brought us nothing but trouble. So, he's saying, look, we've only been cursed by the fact that we're not, you know, associating with these Gentiles. Let's go ahead and do it. You know, let's go ahead and associate with them. This proposal appealed to many people. They're like, this sounds right. This sounds like a good idea. And some of them became so enthusiastic about it that they went to be the king and received him from permission to follow Gentile customs. So they say, all right, we're going to get permission from the king. We want to start following things that the Gentiles do. But there's a problem. Because if you're a Jew, what have you done to yourself already? You've been circumcised, right? So this is what this says in the Maccabees. They built in Jerusalem a stadium like those in the Greek cities. They had surgery performed to hide their circumcision, abandoned the Holy Covenant, started associating with the Gentiles. Now, how do you have a surgery to hide your circumcision? That is weird. That's the kind of junk you get when you start listening to Jewish fables. They had surgery to somehow reverse circumcision. That sounds disgusting. And did, it says this, and did all other sorts of evil things. Well, I can't, I don't want to know what they did other than that. But that's the kind of writing, you think that's God's word? You think that's the preserved oral writings of God's word? Yeah, they perform these special, you know, circumcisions on themselves. Good night. Look at 1 John chapter number 2, verse 21. I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Look, I know I'm preaching this sermon to the choir. I know I'm preaching to a lot of people who already believe everything I said. But look, it's important that we understand that no lies of the truth. We should have nothing to do with them. Nothing to do with this fake nation. Nothing to do with these Judaizers. Nothing with the circumcision made by hands. Why? Look at verse 22. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Why are Christians associating with Antichrist? He says, who's a liar? The guy that's denying Christ. He's the worst liar of them all. And these of Judaism are the worst liars. They blaspheme the Lord Jesus Christ. They deny the Lord Jesus Christ. They killed the Lord Jesus Christ. They steal the promise that was given to him for the land. And they carnalize it all, don't they? They carnalize the fact that they're a Jew. Lie. They carnalize the fact that it's their land. Lie. They carnalize the fact that they're circumcised. Lie. Look, it's not the circumcision made by hands. It's the circumcision of the heart. And their teachings? Lies. It's God's word. This is God's word. Amen. Not what the Midrash says. Not what some Jewish rabbi says. And look, your temple, it was destroyed, buddy. And when you erect it again, you're erecting it for the Antichrist. Not for the real Lord Jesus Christ. Not for the millennial reign. You rejected him. And you have not the Father. They're not teachers. There's nothing we should learn of them. How in the world are Christians today saying, let's bow down to Israel. Let's support Israel. And in the state of Texas today, in the state of Texas, if you want to get hurricane relief from Hurricane Harvey, you have to sign a paper that says that you will not boycott Israel, that you support the physical nation of Israel. Here's my question. What does that have to do with Harvey? What does that have to do with getting hurricane relief? So companies today that say, I don't really want to have unconditional support to Israel, they can't get any Harvey relief funds because there's laws passed in this state that say nobody that can get any state funds that would boycott Israel, that wouldn't support Israel. So, I, you know, I, bad news, 
this church isn't going to get supported by the state. <laughs> this church is not going to be sponsored, all right? They're not going to want to give me any money because guess what? I don't want anything to do with that fake nation, with those blasphemers, with those that hate Christ. Look, and we're not about to have an altar call for missionaries to Israel, just by the way, just in case you're wondering. Look, we're supposed to go out and preach to those that want to hear the gospel. Let's shake off the dust of our feet. And those that preach another gospel, the Bible says, let them be accursed. Just leave them alone. Let them be accursed. I hope all the Palestinians wipe them out. Look, those that hate Christ. Now, the ones that don't, the ones that want to receive the gospel, let's get them saved. And you know what? Occasionally, a circumcised made by the hands will get saved. They will believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, but it's few and far between. But let's not hearken to the lies of Judaism. Let's close in prayer. Thank you, Father, so much for your word. Thank you so much for the truth of your word. Thank you so much for not being racist. Thank you so much for loving all mankind, for giving us all the opportunity to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, for giving us all the opportunity to be the seed of Abraham and to receive the blessings of Abraham by faith. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.